The Skinwalker Ranch is a section of land approximately 480 square acres in size, just southeast of Ballard, Utah. Over the years, countless stories of paranormal activity, encounters with strange animals, UFOs and even animal mutations have been reported from within the ranch. Some of these experiences ranked as some of the most compelling paranormal events ever recorded. The Utes, an old Native American tribe, fought to expel the Navajo from the Skinwalker Basin shortly before the arrival of white settlers. The Navajo would retreat from the basin, but not before cursing the ranch with the presence of a shape-shifting demon. The Myers family settled in the ranch in 1905, making a small homestead on the property. Although they didn't ever publicly report strange creatures or occurrences, they would abruptly abandon their newly built property some short years later, opting to quietly and quickly move far away. When the Sherman family moved to the ranch in 1994 to breed cattle, they were startled by the impressive array of bolts that covered the doors and windows of the main house. Recalling a 2002 quote, there were dead bolts on both sides of the doors. Even the kitchen cabinets had bolts on them, and at both ends of the house, iron stakes and heavy chains had been installed. We guessed the previous tenants had positioned large guard dogs in the front and back of the home, but at the time we had no idea why it wouldn't be long before they would understand. Within a few days of moving in, their livestock started being visited by vicious, strange creatures apparently immune to harm. The Shermans would get a good look at one of these beasts, reporting that it appeared to be a large wolf. When shot with a rifle, the bullets had no effect. Only when blasted several times with a large shotgun would the creature desist from sadistic attack upon their cattle. Other reports from the Sherman's time on the ranch included shafts of light rising like pillars from the ground, fields mysteriously lighting up like stadiums. Massive, semi-visible, shapeless entities also terrorized the family, and multiple people often simultaneously heard a deep, incomprehensible, disembodied voice speaking to them seemingly from above. Strange disturbances in their home left the family with no safe place, eventually opting to all sleep huddled together on the floor of one room. The final straw was when Terry Sherman sent his three dogs to chase glowing blue orbs into the woods, all subsequently being killed by the spheres. Cattle mutilations have also been a large part of the folklore of the surrounding area for decades. They became so frequent, in fact, the National Institute for Discovery Science's founder, Robert Bigelow, purchased the land in 1996. His purchase was with the intentions to undertake extensive investigations within the ranch, an investigation mysteriously funded, which to this day has been a literal media blackout, even closing down a public road running through the vicinity. A move objected by the locals, you have to wonder what they found. Since the moment of the purchase, no subsequent activities within the ranch have been reported or even admitted to. The National Institute for Discovery Sciences maintaining a complete denial of any new events upon the ranch to this day. Not only has a multi-million dollar operation been undertaken within the ranch, but whatever they found, it seems they decided would be better withheld from the general public. As always, thanks for watching guys. Until next time, take care. The phenomena we are about to cover may at first sound absurd, and indeed it would appear to be impossible. However, due to the vast array of witness testimonies which span the earth, it would be ignorant to not approach the subject with an air of curiosity. The phenomena became known as entombed animal, and throughout the years it has been referenced in the writings of William Newberg, J.G. Wood, Ambrose Paré, Robert Plot, André Marie Constant Dumeril, John Wesley, even Charles Dickens mentioned it in his journal All the Year Round. According to Fortean Times, a British monthly magazine devoted to the anomalous phenomena, about 210 entombed animal cases have been described in Europe, North America, Africa, Australia, and New Zealand since the 15th century. Animals are reportedly found alive after being encased in solid rock, coal, or wood for an indeterminate amount of time. The accounts usually involve frogs or toads, thus the phenomenon is sometimes called toad in the hole. Although it has been dismissed by mainstream science, it remains a topic of interest to the Fortean researchers among others. On rare occasions, multiple animals are said to have been found encased in the same place. Benjamin Franklin wrote an account of four live toads claimed to have been found enclosed in quarried limestone. One Eric G. Mackley claimed to have freed 23 frogs from a single piece of concrete while widening a road in Devonshire, the UK. 
and an 1876 report from South Africa said that 63 small toads were found in the middle of a 16-foot wide tree trunk. Though reports of entombed animals have occurred as recently as the 1980s, during the 1820s, English geologist William Buckland conducted an experiment to see how long a toad could remain alive while encased in stone. He placed toads of different sizes and ages into carved chambers within limestone and sandstone blocks, then buried the blocks in his garden. Buckland concluded that toads could not survive inside rock for extreme lengths of time and determined that reporters of the entombed animal phenomenon were mistaken. In an article in an 1890 Scientific American, a writer declared, quote, Many well-authenticated stories of the finding of live toads and frogs in solid rock are on record. While a few years later the editor of the magazine Nature argued, quote, it matters little to tell the reporters of such occurrences that the thing is absolutely impossible, and that our believing it would involve a conclusion that the whole science of geology, not to mention biology, is a massive nonsense." End quote. Assuming that out of the hundreds of reports from around the world, some were actually true, then just how did these animals become entombed in stone? And how did they survive? The last official report was in the 1980s, so we may have to wait a while for another occurrence. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The Pyramid of Menkura may be the smallest of the three main pyramids of Giza, but some find this site to be one of the most intriguing to be found upon the Giza Plateau. Not only does the pyramid still possess casing stones of a polygonal style, nearly identical to that found throughout ancient Peru, and indeed now discovered globally. But it also possesses gigantic ancient megalithic blocks, exposed for all to see. These impossibly huge blocks of stone are clearly of a tremendous age, leading up to a once immaculately carved inner chamber. On the 28th of July, 1837, Howard Weiss rediscovered the upper antechamber of the pyramid. Within, the remains of a wooden anthropoid coffin inscribed with Menkura's name was found. This tomb did indeed contain human bones. However, this is now considered to be a substitute coffin. Radiocarbon dating on the bones also claim to have determined them to be less than 2,000 years old, which, according to certain researchers, suggests an all-too-common bungled handling of remains from another site. Furthermore, along with polygonal masonry, an inner chamber and three tiny accompanying pyramids, known as G3A, G3B, G3C, the age of this pyramid has also not been hypothesized or narrowed down to any specific era within the ancient Egyptian empire, making it an obscurity, and also, predictably, a lesser-known site within academic study and mainstream reporting. Who built the pyramid? Are the megaliths within the outer temple walls the same as those of the exoskeletons of the larger ancient Great Pyramids? An ancient anomaly which has been exposed mostly upon the east wing of Cheops by the removal of outer casing stones which we have in the past reported on, along with their clearly much younger age. In AD 1196, Al-Aziz Uthman, Saladin's son and the Sultan of Egypt, attempted to demolish the pyramids, starting with Menkura. However, and rather predictably, eight months in, they found that it was nearly impossible to destroy. Not only could they only remove one or two stones each day, when a stone fell, it would bury itself in the sand, requiring extraordinary efforts to free it. Wedges were used to split the stones into several pieces. Despite their efforts, workmen were only able to damage the pyramid to the extent of leaving a large vertical gash at its northern face. It is undoubtedly a highly intriguing pyramid.